Okay, so good morning. Thanks for the invitation. So I'm, I'm talking about uh, highlights from, uh, from the LHC in run two. And actually the picture I've uh, taken here is from the proceedings of the uh, LHC workshop here in Aachen from 1990, which is usually uh, thought of as the birth of the uh, LHC. Okay, so after some introduction, I will talk about, talk about standard model, something about the Higgs, searches for new particles, flavor, and some uh, outlook and conclusion. Okay, so you certainly all know that the, the LHC is a proton-proton collider at CERN Geneva. We had the uh, run one at uh, seven, uh, 7 to 8 TV uh, center of mass energy in 20, uh, 10 to 2012, that was when the Higgs was discovered, and then we had run two after a shutdown to uh, upgrade the uh, LHC to 13 TV, which was running from 2015 to uh, 2018. So we have two multipurpose experiments, ATLAS and CMS, where you see sketches uh, here. We have one uh, specialized flavor experiment, LHCB, one specialized heavy ion experiment, ALICE, which uh, is more nuclear physics, so I will not cover it here, and few smaller experiments for forward physics, uh, uh, monopole searches, etc. Okay, so the run, data, the run two data set, which I'm going to talk about, so ATLAS and CMS both have recorded uh, 100 inverse uh, femtobahn at uh, 13 TeV. You see here in the case of ATLAS, the luminosity versus time. You also see this is the, uh, this is the delivered luminosity, this is the, uh, uh, this is the luminosity good for physics, and the total efficiency is 90% for both experiments, which is extremely good for, uh, for a Hadron Collider. And uh, many results have been published with 36 inverse femtobahns, so this is the end of, 20, uh, of 2016, so there was is quite some time left to uh, do careful uh, analysis. The main challenge in, uh, that we have is additional simultaneous PP interaction, usually called pileup. So this is the pileup profile from CMS for the different years. And you see the average pileup in uh, 2017 and 2018 is uh, 38, the LHC design is 20, so this means we run already a factor two higher than the LHC was originally uh, designed. And this is an event with uh, 25 uh, reconstructed, uh, reconstructed vertices, and given the reconstruction efficiency for pileup vertices, this is basically an event which is here in the order of uh, 30 to 40. Okay, the uh, LHC, LHCB, since with their, for their B-Physics program, they cannot send so much pile up. They have a reduced luminosity, but uh, the, so they have a, run one and run two together a total of nine inverse Vomitoban. So let me start with standard model measurements. So uh, you will get more details in a, a Hauptvortrag by Ian Brock on uh, Friday. So uh, many measurements uh, have been done. Uh, first, uh, Okay, many measurements have been done to, te to test the standard model at unpresented energies using jets, quarks, uh, gauge bosons, and tops, and so on. And uh, this is done, first of all, to understand background for searches, to test tools for uh, calculations, but especially to search for deviations from the standard model and find, for, uh, find hints for new physics in uh, this way. So this is, uh, this is all... Uh, this is uh, the measurements that have been done here in the case of ATLAS. You see they span cross-sections from 10 to 11 picoban for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, inclu for the total, uh, or the total uh, inelastic cross-section down to 10 to the minus 3 picoban, so 1 femtoban for the uh, for, uh, WW scattering. So this is in, uh, in total four, uh, 14 orders of magnitude. And in general, there is a very good agreement between the measurements and the predictions. And for the future of the talk, so here, here, uh, here is the Higgs. Uh, this is TTZ, and this is WWJJ, the vector boson scattering. The two, uh, the two analyses I will discuss, uh, discuss a little bit in detail. So let me start with uh, WW scattering. So the process, uh, the process is this one. Uh, two quarks both radiate a vector boson. The vector boson uh, then uh, elastically interact with each other. So in the final state, you have two jets, 
well, mostly in the forward region and two uh, vector bosons. And this is, in principle, an extremely interesting process because uh, without a Higgs, this process is, uh, is violating unitarity at a TeV. So this process is actually sensitive to the uh, Higgs mechanism. And the, uh, of the different, the different choices you have for the vector bosons, W minus W minus or W plus W plus has the, uh, has the lowest background of, uh, of all processes. However, the cross-section is extremely small, but uh, now it is observed with a significance of 6.4 sigma, where the expected sig significance is 4.6. And here you see the digest uh, die mass for this process, and you see in yellow there is a nice uh, signal, every and it, uh, everything agrees with the prediction. The second example that I have is uh, the measurement of uh, TT bar Z production. C uh, CMS has analyzed uh, AT inverse femtobahn, and the, inter the interest of the process is uh, you have a usual TT bar production, but then one of the top quark radiates a Z, so you can probe the top Z coupling here at this uh, vertex. The total cross-section agrees with the standard model prediction at the 10% level, but they have now also measured uh, differential cross-section, so here as a function of PTZ, and also here you see a very nice agreement. And this you can then use in uh, interpretations, for example, in terms of effective field theories to, uh, to uh, probe the uh, TTZ coupling, and the limits here is that if an anomalous uh, TTZ coupling exists, it must be at a scale of larger than roughly uh, 1 TeV. Okay, let me come now to the Higgs. The, uh, you will hear details here from Sarah Heim on uh, Thursday, and just, uh, just to flash very briefly, this is the 4 lepton mass as it, uh, as it was in the CMS uh, Higgs, Higgs discovery paper, and this is where we, stand, uh, where we stand now with the data up to 2017, so not even using 2018, and you see already here the huge progress we made. So some basics on the Higgs. So you know the standard model requires at least one neutral scalar to give mass to particles in a gauge invariant way. This, is, this particle is then usually called the Higgs. And in uh, 2012, Atlas and CMFS discovered a particle at a mass of 125 GeV, which was uh, compatible with the Higgs boson. So spin CP is consistent with zero plus, as predicted. So, and uh, the main production mode at the LHC, ordered by cross-section, are this gluon-gluon fusion, the WW uh, or ZZ fusion, the Bremsstrahlung, and the TT bar fusion. And you see this is largely dominated. These are then suppressed by a little bit more than an order of magnitude, and TT, bar fu uh, TT fusion is even, uh, is even further suppressed by an another factor of six or so. Okay, uh, this, this are the, uh, these are the Higgs uh, branching ratios. So see the largest one is BB bar followed by, uh, by WW. And the one circled in red is what has been, uh, which, what has been seen before the last D, uh, DPG meeting roughly, so before spring 2018. Also in, from the production mode, gluon-gluon fusion and uh, vector boson fusion was, uh, was established. Some, uh, some differential cross-sections have been measured, and up to now everything is consistent that the new particle really is the Higgs boson of the standard model. So the future Higgs program that we have is first we have to establish the last fermion couplings. You see the largest branching ratio is not even measured yet. Increase the precision on coupling measurements to be sensitive uh, to small deviation, measure at higher PT where deviations are more likely, and then finally constrain the Higgs self-coupling. But uh, this is something that uh, we will, uh, we will pro hopefully do in something like 2035 or so. There is a long way to go. Okay, let me start with uh, the search for Higgs to BB. You cannot look into gluon-gluon fusion because there you just you have seen this huge dihigs cross uh, dijet cross section. So there the background is just enormous. So the only chance you have is to look in VH with. Uh, where V is a W or a Z, and this decays electronically. And this is what an event would look like. You have a, you have a Z boson here, here in this case, uh, going here into E plus, E minus. And on the other side of the detector, you have two, uh, you have two B jets that then hopefully a peak, at the, uh, peak at the Higgs mass. And the experiments have done multivariate analysis to enhance the significance. So both experiments use data up to 80 inverse femtobahn, and both establish uh, H2BB individually, both with roughly five and a half sigma. And you see here from, 
from CMS, the uh, jet mass plot, where you see a nice peak on the Z, which you can actually use to calibrate your analysis, and you see also the significant enhancement then on the, uh, on the Higgs mass. And since you look here into uh, VH, the same analysis then also establishes the VH production mode. So uh, now we have the second largest fermion, but we are also, of course, extremely interested in the heaviest fermion, which is the top. Well, because the tth Yukawa coupling is in the order of one. A coupling in the order of one, you always uh, think that this is the best place to look for uh, deviations. However, the top is too heavy that the Higgs can decay into TT bar, so you have to look the other way around. You look for TT bar events where a Higgs is uh, radiated uh, off uh, a top quark. So you need to search for events with two top quarks and a Higgs. And then the top can de de always decays into a W and a B jet, and the uh, W can decay then into a lepton neutrino or into two jets. And uh, the Higgs is then reconstructed in all possible decay modes. So this is, uh, this is a, a good candidate event for TTH, where you see two photons which, uh, peak, at the, uh, which peak at the Higgs mass. So, uh, you, so you basically know here is a, there, was a, there was a Higgs, or at least with a high probability, and you see, uh, you see many jets, including B jets, that come from a, uh, from a, TT, bar, uh, from a TT bar production. And uh, here are the results. So also here, both experiments, uh, both experiments observed uh, TT, uh, TTH. Atlas with 6.36, while using part of their 2017 data, CMS with uh, 5.2 uh, sigma, only using the data from 2015, 2016, and both include run one. And this is now uh, the uh, gamma gamma spectrum for uh, the gamma gamma spectrum for Higgs with uh, uh, for events with a TT bar in the final state, using the full run two data set, and you see the nice peak. So you. Almost, you almost discover now the uh, TTH with one channel only. Okay, what do we learn from this? So the experiments have analyzed all the Higgs measurements coherently. So uh, first of all, the Higgs couple is really proportional to mass. So this is from the CMS case, just the, uh, the, the coupling strength versus the mass. You see there are on this logarithmic scale uh, exactly on a, uh, on a straight line, where for muons there is only a limit, uh, so it's not a significant measurement yet. But this means only that the Higgs decays are not obeying lepton universality as we know from any other, uh, we know from any other fermion. Okay, uh, one, can, one can go further. One can then, for example, uh, analyze, the, analyze the loop couplings where you see gluon-gluon goes via a TT bar loop in the standard model, gamma-gamma then a TT bar or a W loop. And you see also here very good agreement with the prediction. And if we would, for example, have a, a have a fourth fermion generation, the, uh, the point would be somewhere, uh, somewhere up here, so far outside of this, uh, of this plot. And one can also then look for the couplings for every, uh, for every fermion and vector boson separately, and one, uh, one gets limits in the order uh, of five, to five uh, measurements in the order of five to 10%, and even for uh, Higgs decaying into uh, invisible particles, there are limits of the order of 30% in the branching ratio. Let me come now to searches for new particles. So more details here. Uh, Andreas, uh, Andreas Hinzmann will talk about this on Thursday. So uh, why, are, why are we doing searches? So first of all, fundamental physics has several open problems left. So there is dark matter and dark energy, which we don't understand. You know these famous uh, rotation curves, where the rotation of the gas outside in the galaxy is much faster than expected if uh, only visible mat uh, matter would be there. So there is a, there is a huge difference. There is the matter antimatter asymmetry in the, uh, in the universe. There is a huge difference in scales between gravity and uh, other forces. We are hoping for a possible unification of forces. And finally, also neutrino masses are not really, uh, are not really understood. And almost all models that solve some of these problems require new particles, which are often in the, uh, in the TeV range. So the LHC has a broad program to search for new particles, and new searches with a full data set and uh, in previously unexplored phase space regions are available. 
Let me start with uh, supersymmetry, which was, at least for a long time, the most uh, popular extension of the standard model. So the basic here is each boson has a fermionic partner, each fermion has a bosonic partner, uh, a scalar, and uh, this also makes scalar something natural and not as artificial as in the standard model where we just have this uh, one scalar, the Higgs. And uh, however, we don't see SUSY, so this means SUSY must be broken, giving large masses to the, uh, to the partners. And theoretical arguments suggest that uh, this partner should be in the TEV range. There is here this, this uh, argumentation from the hierarchy problem that in principle the Higgs should be extremely heavy in the order of the Planck mass because, uh, because there are loops where the Higgs goes to, for example, a TT bar pair and uh, and then back to a Higgs, and this loop should give a large mass to the Higgs. But if you then add supersymmetry and you take the, uh, you take the partner of this particle, the loop with the partner exactly cancels the loop from the standard model particle, keeping the Higgs light, but it works only if the, Higgs, if the partners are not too heavy. SUSY contains naturally dark matter, and what SUSY uh, particles can, discay, can decay into very long, uh, long cascades. And, uh, the problem here is that in, there are something like a hundred free parameter from the SUSY breaking, and so the details of the production and decay then depends on these parameters. So all these decays, are, all these decay chains here are very model dependent. So the experiments usually use so-called uh, simplified models where a, a single one-step decay is uh, assumed. And then usually at the end of a campaign, some parameter scans are, uh, are performed where one then uh, scans parameters in this uh, 100 dimensional phase space and looks there uh, in more realistic models what, ex uh, what is excluded. But here I said at the end of a campaign, so uh, uh, the, H the ATV scans are somewhat outdated now and for uh, 13 TEV nothing is, uh, is ex ex uh, existing at the moment. So also here, uh, two examples of SUSY searches. First there is, uh, the, uh, first there is strong interest in, in strong SUSY, which means looking for squawks and gluinos. So squawks and gluinos have strong interaction, and strong interaction first means they have, uh, they have a large cross-section, and second means since strong interaction is something we know, the, uh, the, uh, the cross-section is largely model independent. So these are the events typically that we are looking for. The two protons create two gluinos which then decay in some, some decay chains here in, uh, in two quarks and this lightest uh, supersymmetric particle which, uh, which could be stable. So here is a new search from, uh, a new search from CMS which uses the, uh, the, full trend, uh, the full run two data set where they look into jets plus uh, missing transverse energy. So the, the, this, is, this is all the signal regions they are looking, they are looking at, and you see that in all cases the, uh, the number of events is, uh, is extremely consistent with the, uh, with the prediction. So you can see already from this that nothing uh, has been found. And uh, they also have then a very nice extension of their analysis because, okay, so this is the exclusion plane, and you see that uh, uh, and you, usually what is plotted is the mass of the uh, primary particle you look for, so in this case the gluino, but then you have also the mass of this uh, lighter stable supersymmetric particle, and uh, once, you get to, once you get close to the, uh, to the diagonal here, you get insensitive because, uh, all, because all the energy goes into this uh, neutralino and you don't see anything in into the detector anymore. So you see the limits now in the bulk region are, uh, are now up to 2.4 uh, up to 2.4 TeV, but uh, they are, but they also in, enhance their analysis by uh, by taking a uh, taking a region where the uh, chi zero and the chi one are very close in mass, and because they are so close in mass, the chi one uh, can uh, can fly a certain distance before it decays. So they look for a. Uh, uh, for a secondary, uh, for a secondary uh, decay vertex of our tracks that, are, uh, gen that start somewhere in the detector. And with this, uh, with this enhancement, actually, they manage to go very, very close to, these, uh, to this kinematic uh, limit. 
The second, uh, the second uh, example I brought to you is uh, electroweak SUSY. So typically, the masses of the partners of the weakly interacting particles are significantly lower. So this means even if the gluinos are too heavy to be found, you still have a chance to find, uh, to find the electroweak particles. However, the cross-section also is much smaller, so expect here very large gains with getting uh, large, higher luminosities. So typical searches use simple final states like uh, two lepton plus maybe something else plus MET. And there is a new ATLAS analysis using the full run two data set with two leptons, zero jet plus MET. And they use a variable called MT2, which is sensitive to the mass of this uh, newly created particle. And you see here this MT2 distribution for, uh, for data, uh, for the prediction of the standard model and for hypothetical new uh, new genos, and you see clearly that the agreement is very good and uh, nothing is found, so one, can, uh, uh, one has to set uh, limits. And the limits now depend strongly on the assumptions you do and are between 0.4 and 1.1 TeV. So this is, the most, uh, this is the most pessimistic case where you get this 400 uh, GeV limit where you have the Chagino decaying into a W and uh, a neutralino and then, the, uh, and then the W decays into a lepton on both sides. And what you also see here is what I told you, uh, the, uh, the luminosity is extremely important, so the gain from run two is, uh, the gain of run two compared to run one is, uh, is enormous. Okay, other searches for new particles. So many searches for different signatures have been carried out at the LHC, and uh, several analyses use already the full data set. So uh, nothing has been found, and limits have been set, and typical limits are something like more than three TeV for S-channel resonances, and uh, one TeV for pair-produced particles. And this just shows you some types of models that we are looking for. And uh, OK, SUSY, if found, can explain everything. But also, the other models are, uh, have a good chance to, uh, to be sensitive to some of the problems that I introduced to you uh, be, uh, before. So some searches for S-channel resonances. So this is a dilepton search from ATLAS. So the, uh, dilepton searches means for uh, a heavy neutral gauge bosons, typically called uh, Z prime. So here is the dilepton mass spectrum as a function of uh, as a function of the uh, of the mass for for electrons compared to the prediction. And you see that the prediction is extremely good. This would be possible signals. And analyzing this further, you come to mass limits in the order of uh, in the order of five TeV. Similar search has also been done for, for jets. So this is the dijet mass spectrum, where you see the highest event has a, has a dijet invariant mass of, uh, of ATEV. And uh, also here, the, uh, OK, this is not a, not a real prediction in a sense, but it is a, fit, a smooth fit to the data where you look for uh, enhancements. But also here, nothing is found. And uh, since for, for, for strongly interacting particles, the cross-section is larger. One can set limits here up to 7 TeV. However, as you see, one of the problems of this analysis is that, uh, is that uh, the, the trigger starts basically only at 1 TeV, so it gets difficult to look at uh, lower masses. So what you have to do then is to look for events with, uh, for example, if you want to go to very low masses, to look for events with initial state radiation, then you can trigger on this photon. If the photon energy here is high enough, this, uh, these two jets are very boosted, so they, uh, they merge into one jet, and you have to use uh, substructure technique. But uh, CMS managed now, act uh, managed now to analyze the spectrum down to 10, T, uh, 10 GeV and can, with, this, with the new analysis, uh, include, uh, include uh, Z primes in the order uh, of from 10, G, 10 GeV some up to uh, approximately the Z mass. And the interesting thing is if you assume that this Z prime cannot, does not couple to lepton, so was not produced at lepton colliders, there is actually no other, uh, no other limit in the world here. So, uh, so the, Teva, uh, the, the Tevatron, the SPS collider, ISR, nobody has really uh, was able to set limits in this, uh, in this region. So as the last example for searches, let me quickly talk about uh, dark matter. So dark matter is much more abundant than ordinary matter, but we have no idea what it is. In principle, direct searches and astrophysical observations 
and the LHC are uh, sensitive to the same process. So you see here for astroparticle physics, two dark matter particles annihilate into standard model particles somewhere out in the universe. For the direct searches, a dark matter particle scatters of standard model particles in an underground detector and gives some recoil to the outgoing standard model particle. And for the LHC, two standard model particles uh, annihilate into two dark matter particles. But now dark matter is dark, so you don't see it. So the way that we can do it at the LHC is we look for event we can look for events where uh, there is initial state radiation from uh, one of the incoming particles. So one can look for jet plus missing ET or a photon plus missing ET. So uh, dark matter at the LHC, so several models have been studied and these models introduce different kinds of mediators that define the final state. So for example, it can go through a Z prime and that decays into dark matter. You can have a Z prime that goes into a, uh, into a Higgs and some extended Higgs sector which decays into dark matter. Or you have another extended Higgs sector that couples to TT bar and decaying into dark matter. The interesting thing is when you look at these models and you just apply simple quantum field theory, if standard model particles can uh, can produce the Z prime, they can also decay into Z prime. So this means also, uh, also other resonance searches that we do at the LHC are sensitive to dark matter. So just one example for, for a new search. This is a mono Higgs search from uh, CMS. So it's this model where, where the Z prime uh, decays into an extended Higgs sector and you get via a standard, what you see in the detector is, uh, is one Higgs and nothing uh, and nothing else. So they look for this signature in five different Higgs decay modes. And so they are sensitive to the Z prime parts two at the end model. But again, you see very good agreement uh, with expectations. So limits can be set. And here, for example, in this search, you can set limits on this Z prime in the, uh, from something like a few hundred uh, GeV up to two TeV. So how can you interpret these searches? So, uh, Okay, you go into the models, you analyze all your searches that you, have, uh, that you have done. And if you assume, for example, you go to this uh, Z prime model, if you assume relatively large couplings, you see that the indirect searches put, uh, put very strong limits. So you can, in the indirect searches, you exclude the Z prime up to something like two and a half TeV and uh, for, any, for any dark matter mass. So you don't, just don't care about the dark matter mass. And this here are the direct searches, which of course are very sensitive to the, to the dark matter mass. However, then if you change your assumptions and you assume that these couplings are small, the picture can change completely. So in this uh, lower triangle, you have, up, you have no limit anymore from the, uh, from the direct searches, but uh, from the indirect searches, but the direct searches still are, uh, are sensitive to, uh, to dark matter up to something like uh, a TeV for the Z prime and a few hundred GeV for the dark matter mass. You can also then use the, uh, you can then also use the, uh, these models and trans transfer them into the plane that the uh, direct searches are usually using. So you plot the dark, the dark matter mass versus the uh, cross section of the dark matter particle scattering of a nucleon. And uh, here, these are the limits from the direct searches. And uh, these are LHC limits. And you, what you, you see already here, you have to be extremely careful uh, inter interpreting these plots because there is a huge model dependence uh, in, the, uh, in, the LHC, uh, in the LHC limits. But as a general rule, in whatever model you look at, uh, is what you see is that the dark matter searches very well cover the, uh, cover the region of uh, large dark matter masses, but they uh, tend to have a hole at low masses, which uh, usually is then nicely filled by the LHC. Okay, let me end then with uh, some, uh, some words about uh, flavor. And here, uh, Johannes Albrecht will talk about also on uh, Thursday. So some introduction to flavor. So why is it so interesting? So B quarks have a long lifetime because their decays are suppressed by uh, this Kobayashi Maskawa element, uh, VCB square, which is only two, two per mil. So this means new physics contributions can be relatively enha enhanced and uh, the lifetime is long so that precise time dependent measurements are possible. There is a huge statistics available at LHC and Bell Bar Bar Atlas CMS is also, uh, is also working on that. And uh, 
B physics can then perform stringent uh, standard model tests with uh, possible new physics scales even larger than uh, LHC di direct reach because you, uh, everywhere in B physics you get this type of loops and then in a loop you can have a particle of a couple of TeV running which uh, makes visible effects in, the, uh, in, in some of the B observables but is too heavy to be produced at the, uh, at the LHC. So in this talk, I will touch two areas, the test of CP violation and the test of uh, lepton flavor universality. So let me start with uh, CP violation in BS decays. So the BS is only accessible at Hadron Colliders because it's too heavy to be seen on the Y4S. And then uh, CP violation in BS decays can be measured, for example, in BS to J psi phi, J psi J psi k plus k minus or J psi pi plus pi minus. And what you actually measure is this uh, time dependent, uh, this time dependent asymmetry that a, that a, uh, that a, a B bar decays into some final state or the B decays into some final state. And uh, this is proportional to this, uh, to this uh, phase that you are interested in, uh, phi to S, and to, the, uh, to, this, uh, to this, mixing, uh, this mixing oscillation delta uh, delta M times T, and this is, the, uh, this is uh, from LHCB in your analysis where they uh, take the modulo versus uh, of two pi of this oscillation frequency, so they uh, plot all oscillations onto one, and okay, it's not, not yet really significant, but you see a hint of an oscillation that you see, which means you would see, actually, you would see uh, CP violation in BS decays. And and uh, for, uh, for this winter, we have new analysis from LHCB and from, uh, from ATLAS. So uh, LHCB measures phi s to be 0.030 plus or minus 0.025. Uh, ATLAS measures a slightly larger number with slightly larger errors. And the uh, heavy flavor averaging group has already produced a new average, which, is, uh, which gives 0.055 plus or minus 0.020. Uh, 21. You see all measurements that exist in this plot compared with, uh, compared, compared with the new average, and uh, this means uh, CP violation in BS decays is at the 2.5 sigma level. So it's not really established, but uh, you see we will pass 3 sigma probably already when CMS does, the, uh, does a similar analysis uh, as, uh, as ATLAS. Okay. What is uh, completely new now is CP violation in CHAM decays. Okay, you, CP, you know CP violation was discovered, uh, was discovered in, uh, in, in, in the Kaon system, then since a long time it's seen in, uh, in the B system. However, there should also be CP violation in, uh, in CHAM decays, but it is much smaller because the decays are CKM allowed, so the, uh, the, the CHAM has just much less, uh, less time to, uh, to violate CP. So what, what you need is you need a decay, for example, a, a flavor symmetric decay, for example, D2 uh, pi pi or D2 kk, which can proceed in two ways, either on a bond level or with a loop, which then have different phases, and these phases can interfere so that uh, due to the interference, the rate, uh, the rate of uh, the D decaying into this mode or the D0 decaying into this mode is, uh, is different. Uh, LHCB has presented uh, an, an analysis on this. They have a sample of more than a billion, uh, more than a billion decays. So they uh, tag flavor at production with a soft pion tag or with a muon tag, then count the number of events and correct for experimental effects. And what they see is uh, CP violation in uh, charm decays with a significance of 5.3 sigma. So uh, for the first time, this is. Uh, this is really established. This is also consistent with theory. However, the theory uncertainty is very large, so it's difficult to draw for firm conclusions from that. My second example is a lepton flavor violation. So apart from the Higgs, all interactions are lepton flavor universal. So lepton flavor violations is a sign of new physics. In the last years, there are two hints for lepton flavor violation from BDKs. First, there is this ratio B to D mu or D star uh, to be to uh, d, d tau or d star tau to be to d mu or d star mu. There are measurements from Baba, Bell, LHCB, and in total they see four point, uh, four, uh, something like four, four sigma deviation. This is uh, the standard model decay here is on bond level, and the effect is in the order of 10%, so the new physics contribution here must be pretty large. So uh, the, second, the second ratio is where you look into B to 
K or K star mu mu to B to K or K star E E. These, re these uh, ratios are precisely measured by LHCB. So to cancel systematic uncertainties, they uh, normalize they normalize the numerator and denominator to the corresponding J psi mode to cancel efficiencies. LHCB has now updated uh, RK with a part of some of the run two data. And also here, they say, they, you see here in RK star and also RK, they see a deviation from the prediction. So if you combine it, it's also on the four sigma level. However, here the bone process is at loop level. So you expect, uh, you, uh, so you expect some, uh, you expect a much smaller effect then. Okay, so uh, let, this leads me then to my outlook and uh, conclusions. So we are now in a two year shutdown with some upgrade of the LHC and the experiments. During this time, the analysis of the present data set should be completed. Run three will follow then with three years with roughly 200 femtoban luminosity. And this one that will be followed by another long shutdown which major upgrades of the detector and then a long run for 3000 inverse femtoban. Okay, so my conclusion. So the LHC has performed very well in run two and delivered a huge data set to analyze. First results with a full data set are already available. And up to now, everything is consistent with the standard model, with the only possible hint for new physics coming from uh, lepton flavor violation in BD case. However, the analysis use only 1 to 5% of the final LHC data set, so we can expect much more to come. And uh, I think this talk should mainly be an appetizer for all, for all the Hauptvorträge during the week, where you can learn uh, many more details on all the subjects. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Klaus, for this very nice talk uh, explaining what we've learned from the run two LHC data so far. Are there any questions? Yeah, Norbert. Ah, Norbert. Uh, slide 20, please. Twenty. Sorry? Twenty. Twenty, yeah. Would you like to comment why the background also peaks under the peak? There is, there is a small background where uh, you have a Higgs, but you don't have a TT bar in the event. So, uh, so this is Higgs, but not TT Higgs. Okay, thank you. Further questions? So can you comment what goes into the thermal, uh, thermal relic dashed line? This are, cosmo this are uh, calculations where you assume, okay, you, you take the model, you take the couplings as you assume then, and then you just calculate uh, from, uh, you, you just calculate from cosmology if you want to, if you just want to get the uh, get, get the dense, the dark matter density, the dark matter density that is seen in the universe, if you want to get it completely from this uh, from this model. So if you assume that uh, if you assume that all dark matter is generated uh, by this uh, by this Z prime model, then you have to be on this line. Okay, thank you. I don't see any other questions, so let's thank Klaus again. Thank you.